The Rough Pastels filter does two things. It applies a texture to your image and then reproduces the image as if with pastel chalks. The chalk is thickest in light areas of the image, and the texture is allowed to show through in highlights and shadows, as you can see in this example, using Photospin's image number 136 Rough Pastels has one of the more complex interfaces of any of the filters in the filter gallery. Generally speaking, you'll start with the lower half of the settings first, selecting your texture before working with the stroke length and stroke detail. To properly evaluate texture decisions, you'll want to start with a light setting of perhaps top left, the more familiar setting in Photoshop. As you can see, Brick, burlap, canvas, and sandstone are offered. Generally speaking, you'll work with canvas or perhaps burlap for images with very large pixel dimensions. Even at 200% scaling, brick is a rather small pattern to be used with an image even measuring, as this does, only 1,800 pixels wide. In such a case, if, for example, you were perhaps simulating outdoor advertising or graffiti, you could use image size to downsample apply rough pastels, and then upsample your image back to your original pixel dimensions. Note, too, the triangle to the right of the texture pop-up. You can load textures from Photoshop's Presets Textures folder, or you can use any 8-bit grayscale texture you create yourself. You probably wouldn't use, for example, the puzzle texture with Photoshop's rough pastels filter, but you might, for example use the stucco 2 texture. However, generally speaking, you'll be using canvas to represent a rough pastel on canvas type relief. As you see, scaling determines the size of the pattern, and relief determines the prominence of the pattern, the shadows and the highlights that actually show us the texture in the image. Once you've selected your texture and set your scaling and relief, You'll flip back through the light options to see which is the most flattering for your image. You might, for example, find a huge difference between bottom left and top left. In many images, it will make no difference at all. Now, in the upper half of the controls, you'll work with the stroke length and stroke relief sliders to produce the chalk lines that separate this filter from the texturizer filter. The strokes will be most apparent in the image where sizable areas of light and dark adjoin where neighboring areas of great tonal contrast abut. The stroke length slider controls how much overlap you create between the dark and the light areas, and the stroke detail slider works with the prominence of the strokes. If the strokes are looking a bit too prominent, try reducing the relief slider a little bit on your image. And again, once you've set your stroke length and stroke detail, you'll want to double-check your light settings to see if perhaps one is more flattering than others. You'll find that the rough pastels filter can be better controlled by first using the palette knife filter or the Image Adjustments Posterize command to create areas of solid color and more definite transitions between the colors. In this case, the top layer was filtered using rough pastels only. The lower layer, which has more definite areas of separation between smooth and texture, was first palette knifed and then rough pastels was applied. You can see that the appearance in areas where two colors abut is much more prominent than without first using pastels. Here we have strokes throughout the midtones, and here the texture and the chalk lines are better delineated. So again, you can use rough pastels with the posterize adjustment, with perhaps palette knife, or with any of the other filters or adjustments that create large areas of solid color, minimizing detail in the image within those areas.